नमस्ते वेलकम टू आवर गाइडेंस क्लासेस फॉर द ग्रुप ऑन सर्विसेज कनेक्टेड बाय द टी सेट इन दिस सेशंस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एज यू नो दैट साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया फॉर द प्रिलिम्स एज वेल एज मेन्स ऑल्सो अमंग साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी वी हैव बेसिक्स ऑफ फिजिक्स इज वन ऑफ द मेजर चैप्टर in this uh, we are going to discuss about the various branches of physics and uh, its basic uh, principles and laws okay so we have uh, various kinds of forces energies so we discussed already uh, fluid dynamics thermodynamics uh, mechanics now electricity and now we are shifting to the uh, next area that is uh, uh, called as a magnetism as you know it magnetism the motion of electrical charges creates current and generates an electromagnetic force resulting them in magnetism like charges magnet consists of two opposite components these components called poles are also similar to charges in that like poles repel while opposite attracts each magnet has a north and south pole earth also has magnetic poles though their location is not quite the same as the more popular uh, geographic north and south poles scientists think that at this swinging swirling metallic core creates the plants magnetic field the making at giant magnet and we will feel that our earth is a big magnet generally uh, uh we will call it as alnico a l n i c o alnico generally aluminum nickel and cobalt uh these uh, combination will form some there are two kinds of magnets as uh, permanent magnets and temporary magnets and we have electromagnets also there every magnet has two poles we call it as north pole and south pole clear so now we are so when you oh, when you consider this is called a bar magnet this is a bar magnet we have a, so this is a north pole for example say this is a, a south pole the magnetic force of attraction is concentrated is more at poles and minimum at the center the magnetic line of forces starts from north pole to south pole the importance of the these uh, magnetic line of forces so they like a smooth curves they won't intersect each other so that's a very very important so this uh, uh, magnet and you know that and the force uh, between you take it as one object here so it attracts and a very important uh, thing is uh, like poles repel and unlike poles like poles will be repel and unlike will will be means between north and north there is a repel repel force between north and south there is an attractive force is there clear so this is a very very important and as you know that so we have uh, for each and every molecule the reason is so when you make when you take it as so when you take a, a magnet and non magnet all all our substances have the uh, dipoles if they arranged in a regular order then it exhibits a magnetism a magnetic force of attraction but uh, if they are not arranged in in order so it will lose their magnetic forces clear so that's a, and the very important thing is uh, uh, the force is uh, simply we call it as mu naught by 4 pi and say m1 m2 by d square this is the force of attraction uh, between a uh, two that is a uh, mu naught by 4 pi uh, m1 m2 by d square here for mu naught is called permeability mu naught is called permeability and uh, uh, so this uh, and the unit for the permeability is henry per meter 
entry permit. So, this is a very important thing you have to oh, know this about this policy. Okay. When you come into this uh, uh, two magnets, when you take it as uh, any two magnets, just now I said f is equal to uh, mu naught by 4 pi and m 1 m 2 by r square and of course, here you know that uh, units will be uh, here and uh, Weber and the units for the pole strength, units for the pole strength is, is Weber, units for the pole strength is called Weber, clear. Okay. Now, I uh, come to the very important thing is optics. So, optics means uh, eyeglasses, contact lenses, microscopes, move projectors, cameras and more all exist because of the physics of light or optics. These innovations harness the principles of reaction, refraction are the angles at which light bends when entering into a different material. For example, glass lenses similar to the lens of an eye use refraction to the focus and magnify the images. The refraction also creates strange images of a disproportionality a square to lower half when a person stand west deep in a pole. Light travels slower in water. So, the human eye gazing at the pole from the above perceives objects in water as closer than the actually they are. Okay. So, now we will discuss about the uh, light one. And light for example, C means uh, light have five properties that is called a uh, simply called as a reflection, refraction, dispersion, dispersion, uh, diffraction, polarization and total internal reflection. These are the different uh, properties of a uh, light. When a light ray, when you take it as uh, a light ray incident on a, a surface means uh, this is called angle of incidence. When you draw a normal to it, okay, this is called angle of reflection. So, here I is equal to R. Angle of reflection is equal to angle of incidence. So, this uh, and the angle made by with the normal drawn at the point angle of incident and angle of reflection both will be same. You are, we are seeing our image because of reflection of light. Okay. So, there are two kinds of, uh, there are two kinds of lights, there are two kinds of uh, things here. One is called, uh, 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 what you call it as, some objects allows the light through it and some objects will not allow the light. If you take it as some water in it, a glass of water, when you keep a, a spoon inside it, so you, when you observe it from the Top. So, it, it seems to be a little bit of bend. The reason is reflection. When the light ray travels from what the lighter media to denser media, it bends. Then we are observing that image will be bends. That is called a refraction. Okay. When the light ray instant on a prism, okay it reflected if course diffracted into seven colors like it as vibzr violet indigo green, blue green yellow orange and red so in the, this process is called uh, diffraction simply and of course uh, in the rainbow will be forms and uh, as you know that uh, the total internal uh, reflection total internal due to total internal reflection. So, we can we are able to see the another and uh, of course, the fiber optics based on total internal reflection uh, concept only. The velocity of the light is uh, 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. So, this is the velocity of light and uh, as you as you know that uh, actually there are two theories, uh, uh, one is called Newton-Krebsler theory and uh, Huygens theory, that means uh, 
uh, according to the uh, uh, Newton's theory, it travels like uh, uh, it travels in a, a linear path as a particles, whereas the Huygens theory, a uh, light travels in in a in a wave theory. Like Huygens wave theory is there, so there is a dual theory for this a uh, uh, light. Newton's corpuscular theory and uh, Huygens wave theory is there. So, one of the important uh, area in this uh, particular thing here, when you take it as uh, uh, lenses, we have uh, a convex lens, take it as a convex lens. This is a convex lens, okay. When the lens, so convex lens is said to be as convex lens is said to be convergent lens and concave lens, concave lens is said to be divergent lens. So, why convex lens is said to be convergent lens? Why concave? This is a very, very important. The important thing is when you consider, when you consider a prism, when the light ray incident on it, so it bends towards its base. When the light ray incident on a prism, so it bends towards its base. So, this is a very important thing here. So, when you take it as a convex lens, we can split the convex lens into some parts. When you observe this, the means here, so the middle one, the middle one is exactly as a glass prism. When the light ray is instant on this part, it travels like there is no kind of deviation. But when you see above this glass slab, all the bases of the prisms, all are prisms, correct? All are downwards. The bases of the prisms are downwards. When the light ray incident on this prism, as per the pro property of the light, it bends towards the base, means like this. When the light ray incident on this here, it bends towards it. When light ray incident and bends towards it. So, here in, when you consider this, these parts, the basis of these parts is in upward direction. Means, again when the light ray incident on it, it bends towards it. It bends towards it and it bends towards the point. Means, all light rays is converged at one point. So, for that reason, convex mirror Convex lens, so convex lens is said to be is convergent lens. We'll get the real image by using a convex lens. We'll get a real image. Is it called convergent lens? When you consider this concave lens, so when you divide in the same manner. The middle one is a glass slab as you know it. When the light ray incident on it, it travels like here when you see above the glass slab, above the glass slab, the base is in upward direction. When the light ray incident on it, it, it bends towards the base means like, correct? Here it is in downwards it bends towards light. Means, uh, when you extend these lines here, correct? So, means here, so the light rays are diverged. So, here the light rays are converged, means it forms a image. So, here it does not form here virtual image, means we cannot catch this image on screen. So, convex this is called uh, as, is, a, is a divergent lens, it is a concave lens. So, this is a very important, when you, when you want to learn the concepts, you have to understand the basic concept, otherwise simply if you buy heart it, uh, Convex lens is a convergent lens and concave lens is a, a divergent lens, there is no use. So, why it is convex, why is convergent, why is 
divergent that basic concept is a very very important and the very important thing is uh, so when uh, when you take a prism the light ray incident and correct and it bends towards it towards it and like okay so this one means uh, when actually when you extend this line extend line this one, this is called angle of deviation say this is a uh, angle of prism this is angle of deviation angle of prism here uh, there is a snell's law mu is equal to sin i by sin r mu is equal to sin i by sin this is called snell's law so here i is angle of incidence and r is angle of reflection refraction clear okay so mu equal to sin i by sin r and here you can say mu is equal to sin of a plus d by 2 by sin a by 2 a plus d by 2 by sin a by 2 here uh, a is angle of prism and d is a uh, angle of deviation and sometimes mu is equal to you can say 1 by sin c c is called critical angle mu equal to 1 by sin c and uh, c is called a, a critical angle this is also a very very important and uh, the very important thing here so, um, if you two mirrors when you take it as a, a two mirrors, this is one mirror and this is another mirror, the number of images formed between these two mirrors is uh, 360 by n minus 1. Okay. How many images here? Yeah. And if you say that, uh, if uh, what you what you call it as a u if if you say u v f this one is f is a focal length and v is a the of course we call it as a, the distance of the image from the foci and from the lens and u is the distance of the object then the relation between these uh, three is 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v this is called lens making formula 1 by f is equal to 1 by u plus 1 by v this is very important and your neck and uh, uh, radius of curvature is equal to 2 times of the focal length this also one more com concept clear so like uh, we have uh, various uh, parts now we are coming to the uh, different principles that is Archimedes principle. This is a very important. The principles was uh, discovered in third century BC by the Greek, Greek mathematician Archimedes. It states that when a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upward thrust equal to the weight of the fluid displayed by it that, that is its uh, apparent loss of weight is equal to the weight of liquid is displaced this is called archimedes principle so maybe uh, means here when a object is immersed in a liquid how much volume how much quantity of the liquid is okay is just uh, uh, it will displace that amount of that quantity the volume of that a liquid is equal to the volume of the object that is the concept. This is the principle of Archimedes as you know it there is a lot. So, actually there is a historical uh, story also there. Uh, so, means here at the time only he used the one word called as Eureka means I find. So, and on that there is a one uh, teaching strategy also there that is called heuristic method heuristic method based on this uh, Archimedes principle only means here Archimedes principle is uh, discovered by the Archimedes by its, its name only and when a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid it experiences an upward thrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by it 
and it apparent loss of weight is equal to the weight of liquid displaced. This is called archimedic principle. And the next one is second law is called Avogadro law. Avogadro law in 1811, it was discovered by an Italian scientist, uh, Andrews Avogadro. This law states that equal volume of all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, uh, it contains equal uh, number of molecules. We will use one word called as STP, standard temperature and pressure. And we will call it as one more NTP also, normal temperature and pressure. Here, st at standard temperature and pressure, uh, a gas of one molar contains 6.023 into 10 power 23 molecules. This one is called Avogadro number and this is called Avogadro law also. According to the Avogadro law, equal volume of all gases under the same conditions of the temperature and pressure, under the same conditions of temperature and pressure means are on it, STP, standard temperature and pressure. So, one molar gas contains 6.023 into 10 power 23 molecules. So, all equal volume of equal volume, all gases have the same number of equal number of molecules. This is called Avogadro law. Okay. Now, we are going to see the next one, Ohm's law. So, it states that the current passing through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the potential difference across the two points provided the physical state and temperature etc. of the conductor does not change. At constant temperature between the two ends of the conductor, the potential difference is directly proportional to the current passing through it means uh, V is proportional to I. V is the potential difference by the two ends of the conductor and I is the current flowing through it. As uh, we can say is equal to V equal to R I, R is here the proportional constant and this one is called the resistance. So, V is equal to R I, the condition is at constant temperature. We will draw a, a triangle also that is a V and say R I, you can say cross here means V is equal to R I or V is equal to R is equal to V by I or I is equal to V by I. From this you can write it V equal to R I, R is equal to V by I, I is equal to V by R. Clear? like you can write it. So, the substances which satisfies the Ohm's law is called ohmic conductors, which does not satisfy the Ohm's law is non-ohmic conductors. So, this is a, this is a Ohm's law, clear? So, means uh, simply uh, the potential difference is directly proportional to the current passing through it. Now, next one the relation between the Newton's laws. So, the first law uh, represents uh, the inertia. As you know, uh, until and unless the external force acting on it, the body will continue the same the position, the same position means when it in constant, when it is in constant uh, speed motion, it is in motion only, when it is in at rest, it, it is still at rest only clear that is called um, inertia. This is the first law states the moment of inertia simply it states the law of inertia. The second law. Second law changes says that f is equal to m a correct ok means here the rate of change of momentum is called is force. So, f is equal to m a ok and the next one uh, as the third law as you know that the third law says that for every uh, action there will be equal and opposite 
reaction that is a relation. So, this is a relation between first law and second law I mean a, a special case here and for all matters it will be same here. So, these are the three different laws for Newton's ok. Now, moving to the next one Coulomb's law the force between the two electrical charges reduces to a quarter of its former value when the distance between them is doubled. The SI unit of electrical charge is Coulomb is named after Charles Augustine D. Coulomb who established the law. So, simply you can say uh, the force between 2 f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q 1 q 2 by d square. Here epsilon naught we call it as permittivity and q 1 q 2 is the charges here and d is the distance between the charges the force between these two and the unit for uh, uh, charge is coulomb. So, the force between two electrical charges q 1 and q 2. So, here uh, as a distance the is the distance increases when the distance doubles the force between the charges will be becomes of one fourth. So, that is a, a Coulomb's law or you can say f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q 1 q 2 by d square clear ok. Now, the next one the Stephen's law. Uh, Stephen's law uh, is 1835 to 1883. The total energy is radiated from a black body is equal to the fourth power of its uh, absolute temperature. The st uh, Stephen's law states that the total energy is radiated from a black body is equal to the fourth power of its uh, absolute temperature. So, here uh, if you say the energy is E rate from black body is equal to the fourth power of its absolute temperature means is uh, absolute temperature say, say is T then T to the power of 4. This is called as uh, the Stephen's law and uh, one more important law is called Pascal's law. This Pascal's law means 1623 and 1662 the Pascal when pressure is applied to a fluid the pressure changes is transmitted to every part of the fluid without loss. Hydraulic machines like the hydraulic press work on this principle. Atmosphere pressure decreases with the increase of its height. The SI unit of pressure is Pascal as you know it which is named after Pascal who established this law. So, this is a very important thing here. When the pressure is applied to a fluid, the pressure it change pressure changes is transmitted to every part of the uh, fluid without loss. Mostly these hydraulic machines are uh, working on this principles only and like the hydraulic press works on this uh, uh, pressure ok. Uh, the units for the pressure is Pascal. So, this one we call it as a, a Pascal law. The last one is we can have to discuss as the Hooke's law. Uh, as you know that this law states that the extension of a spring is proportional to the tense stretching and doubling of the tension results a doubling of the amount of stress. As see here means that simply uh, uh, is directly proportional as the force is increasing. So, uh, means here. Uh, the extension of the spring is also increased as the tense increases the also is means here f is proportional to l. So, like it will says the Hooke's law is saying. So, if l is uh, uh, more then it has more elasticity uh, and and when it is less we have uh, more plasticity that is uh, uh, based on the Hooks elastic uh, material depends on the Hooks law which satisfies this one about. These are the uh, various things uh, different laws we have some more laws in the physics 
we have to discuss all these things the next session uh, until so these all these things are you have to uh, remember and practice these things definitely it helps to understand the basics uh, basic concept of uh, physics clear here already you learned that uh, Ohm's law that is uh, Ohm's law is very important as you know that V is equal to R i and Coulomb's law and uh, universal uh, gravitational law universal uh, universal force universal gravitation law also uh, very important as you know that f is proportional to m1 m2 f is proportional to 1 by r square and f is equal to m1 m2 by r square of course g m1 m2 by r square all these laws you have to practice definitely it gives a clear concept to all of you thank you